Minutes Odyssey with Namaste. With a little bit of Michael Jackson thrown in at the end there. <laughs> it was kind of awesome. Good morning. How are you this morning? You all right? Prove it. <laughs> yeah. All right, how about this? Say after me. Praise God, it's a perfect day. I am so glad to be here. Life is good. And so it is. Do you know why we say, and so it is? Because if we say it, it is. That's how life works. It works from the inside out. You've come into a spiritual community that believes that mind makes our world, and we have access to the mind that created the universe, and we're using it all the time. So you are so welcome into this space this morning where we are working together to create a world that works for everyone and for all of creation. If you're here for the very first time, we embrace you as a guest. We hold you in high esteem. We believe that you are a divine and perfect creation, and we want you to discover that or remember that or accept it for yourself this morning. So everything that we do is geared toward that end. And so you're welcome here as a first-time visitor. We have a welcome center in the lobby after the service ends this morning. I invite you to stop there. A wonderful group of people will introduce themselves to you. They can answer questions. They have a gift for you. They'll show you around the center so you can find out where the bookstore is, where the kids go if you have children, um, all of that kind of thing. They can show you. And then, of course, our prayer room and our fellowship room. That's an, uh, they're, they're their honor to show you around today. If you're back for a second time, it's wonderful that something ignited in you and has brought you back into our midst. We encourage you and invite you to come on a regular basis because those of us who are here on a regular basis are having a wonderful time remembering the truth of who we are. If you're joining us online live or via our archive, welcome. The truth that we speak is always the truth, so it's not just so for today. So we're grateful that you're with us whenever you are with us, and it's great to see you all here this morning. Um, I think that's it for now. Yes, it is. So one of the things that we love to do is sing in this center. We sing uh, congregational songs, right? Yeah. And so I invite you, if and as you're able to go ahead and stand up, Lynn's going to join me. We're going to sing a song by Eddie Watkins Jr. called You and Me. It goes like this. One life living as you and me, one light shining as you and me, one love loving as you and me, because God, God is all there is. is. One life living as you and me, one light shining as you and me, one love loving as you and me, because God is all there is. I'm shining from the inside out, I'm so happy. I just gotta shout, woo! One life living as you and me, one light shining as you and me, one love loving as you and me, cause God is all there is. One life living as you and me, one light shining as you and me, one love loving as you and me, cause God is all there is. I'm shining from the inside out, I'm so happy. I just want to shout One life living as you and me One light shining as you and me One love loving as you and me Cause God is all there is One more time One life living as you and me One light shining as you and me One love loving as you and me Cause God is all there is Yeah! Spend a couple minutes shining that light that you are Shake a hand and get a hug
this is for tall people and now it's for shorter people. I had to say that. <laughs> As we move into this morning's contemplation, please take a moment to check in on Facebook and then silence your cell phones and other electronic devices. Thank you. Let's begin with this week's affirmation from your program. You might choose to cut it out and read it aloud. Put it where you can see it regularly as it helps you celebrate who you are. The affirmation, I am grounded in love and overflow with the strength and power of God. As I walk in oneness, I am in command of my life and all that I do. Now let us take a deep breath and let the music carry us into the silent place for that moment to be one with God, after which I'll do the invocation. I need to be still and let God love me. I need to be still and let God love me. When this old world starts to push and shove me, I need to be still and let God love me. I need to relax, let God take over. I need to relax, let God take over. And take this load off of my shoulders. I need to relax and let God take over. To be still and let God love me. I need to be still and let God love me. When this old world starts to push and shove me, I need to be still. Let God love me. I need to be still and let God love me. And in this stillness, this moment that we have come together individually and as a community to celebrate the truth that God is all in all, always. And we come together, whether it be here physically or spiritually, wherever we are, we share the message and the music and the truth of the allness of God in and as who we are. And in the truth, we know the allness of God. In the truth, we know our oneness with God and our expression as God. And in the truth, we celebrate choice, the idea 
the action, the experience. For as we form ideas and think our thoughts, we guide our experiences. And in the truth, God is love. And as this is the truth, we are divine expressions of love. And for this, I am so grateful for all the ways each of us expresses the truth in this moment and beyond. For it is all good. It is all our highest good. And together we say, and so it is. It seems like the, uh, the word of the day uh, in the band is to live in the present moment because we can never tell uh, what's going to change in our lives. And really, this is the moment. Uh, things happen in our lives and we never expect them, but I think the thing that we can expect is things are going to change. And good things, challenging things, uh, hard things, amazing things, loving things. Uh, life is full of change, but the one thing we can count on is now and the present. So we're going to play a song for you called Forever Is Now.
by Darren. Beautiful. Wow. Forever is now. That was the name of it? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Oh. Our April theme, spiritual living through transformation and evolution. Those are two of the values, transformation and evolution, that we hold as a community. And the title today sounds kind of like a drag. <laughs> dealing with conditions. Anybody dealing with conditions right now? A few of you? <laughs> so as is our want, and Valerie did this beautifully for her meditation service this morning, we're going to have a different context, perhaps, one that feels a little more hopeful and positive, um, a, a new way to think about this instead. Just for now, I want you to bring into your mind a condition or a situation in your life, maybe more than one, that you are not happy about. Is that hard to do? For most of us, it's not. For the rest of us, we're lying. <laughs> um, so, so we can think of one or two or more conditions in our life, areas of our life that we are unhappy with. What if, now that you have that in your mind, what if with what you experience here today, that those conditions or those areas of your life for once and for all could be dealt with, transformed? Would you be okay with that? Yes. To be just done with it? Because that's possible. That is possible for every one of us today. It's possible for every one of us all the time, but you took the time, you made the commitment, you honored your own whatever it was that brought you here this morning. And so why not make the most of it? Allow that opportunity, that possibility to take shape and form in your experience. I will take you through everything necessary to have that happen, to have that condition, that area of your life transform, but the result is up to you, all right? It, you can't blame me. <laughs> That's the good news for me. But, I mean, you can blame me, but it's really not me. The result really will be up to you. So first, some context. A lot of our classes, our adult education classes, which have begun for this term already, and, and really most of the, the things that I share with you from this platform are geared to explaining, illustrating, showing, uh, uh, explaining how our life gets to be the way that it is, how the conditions of our lives end up showing up. That's pretty much what I talk about and what I explore all of the time. Well, in our book for April, Love and Law, this is based on some private teachings and some lectures that Ernest Holmes did early in his career in this faith that he was putting together, this philosophy that he was discovering and assembling. This is from the period around 1918 to 1920. And, um, I, you know, it's, it's tough to, to acknowledge this book is still back-ordered. We can't get it in, but I know some of you have a, your name on a list. I would invite you to put your name on a list. If it's not in the bookstore, it's worth the wait. It is some pretty amazing and powerful stuff. Early in his career, Ernest Holmes was pretty black and white about things. And in this case, this chapter in the book is called Dealing with Conditions in Life. And here's what he said. We are surrounded by a psychic life, a subjective, creative, conscious, receptive, neutral force which receives the impress of our thought always and has no alternative. You will find that whether you are conscious of it or not, every one of us is right where we are because of what we are. Because of what we are and of what the world believes about us. Recognition of this is necessary. Don't deny it. Everyone is right where they are because of what they are. I am right where I am because of what I am. So bring back to mind those areas of your life you're not happy with. I am right where I am because of what I am. Now notice this is not saying because of who I am. The who of me, who I am is a perfect creation of God. That is always the truth. But what I am, what I am is the result of what I have thought, what I have believed, what I have accepted as the truth of my life. And so in reality, I am where I am in my life because of that, because of what I have been thinking, what I have belie been believing, what I have been accepting. So the conditions of my life, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the lovely, the, con the, the, the condition of my life is the direct result of my use of this process of creation that we all have the power to use, when, whether we are conscious of it or not. We are always using the power of this creative mind that God is to affect the, the things in our life. So Ernest Holmes says, 
Here's the way to do it. You are not dealing with conditions. You're not dealing with conditions. Overcome it. To think of anything creates it. In this case, he uses disease. To think of disease creates it. Or to think of lack. Or to think of dysfunction or, or disharmony or, or unloveliness. To think of it creates it. You are dealing only with thought. Thought, nothing else. Thought and spirit. Spirit is the thing that thinks in you, and so you are dealing only with the activity of spirit, which is thought. And you must believe that thought is law. It's, a, it's, like a, it's like an endless loop, a circle. Thought is law, is thought is law. Spirit is law, is thought is spirit. It's all the same thing. We are dealing with that. Mind makes our world. The mind of God created the universe. That same mind in us is creating the effects of our life, creating the conditions of our life. And more detail about that, again, from this chapter called Dealing with Conditions. He says, in any case, the only thing there is is intelligence, substance, and form. Now, you might hear of, that, hear of that as spirit, soul, and body, or seed, soil, and plant. He says, here is a limitless intelligence, self-consciousness, and within this limitless intelligence is a limitless substance, which is the form of everything. It appears in space. So there's the intelligence, the thought, the mind of God, and the substance of God, which is also limitless, and it takes shape. He says, in this limitless intelligence and substance and form, the form is dissolvable back into substance as intelligence acts and reacts through it to produce it. So form is dissolvable. If you think of the conditions of your life, the things that I asked you to think about and the others, that is all form. That is all the result of the creative process, and it is dissolvable back into the invisible. He says, this is spirit, soul, and body of the universe, the unity of everything. All substance is unified. When it is dissolved, it is one primal substance. We are one. We are made in the image and likeness of God. So we have been created into form, into, into visible form, out of the invisible substance that is God. So has this entire universe. It comes from the invisible substance of God. And what is created in form can be dissolved back into the invisible. That's what happens when we let go of this body and move on in our eternal expression of God. It simply is taking on the invisible substance of God. And in, in again, so in, in a nutshell, really, that is our teaching about how life gets to be the way it is. It gets to be the, the way it is because of my use of that creative power. My use of that law that brings what I think and believe and accept into form, into the experience of my life. And if we want our life conditions to be different, the call, the task, the job is for us to be using that creative intelligence, that infinite limitless intelligence in a different way to bring about results that are more pleasing to us. One of the things that always, that, that could happen, that can be a a thing that, that people take on when the talk gets like this, it's like, mind makes my world, is an idea of blaming, about blaming myself for the conditions of my life. Blame does absolutely no good. So if you're sitting there going, well, these conditions of my life are my own fault. Yeah, I hear that. It's like, I'm not finding fault. But what we want to do is see how that happens, how it works that way, so that we can begin to reshape our experience by thinking new thoughts, by accepting new things, by working on, on dissolving those beliefs that, that seem to limit or, or harm our own experience, or our own physical bodies. This is not about blame. This is about saying, this is the way that it works. And if it does work this way, and it does, then how can I use this in a way that will be more pleasing to myself? So for now 100 years, this teaching has been, has been chock full of examples of the power of mind to create and change the conditions of our life. We have countless examples of it in our teaching. If you think about it through your own life, I'm sure you could come up with ways that you have had certain experiences as a result of the thoughts you were thinking or the things that you were believing or what you accepted as truth about yourself. So we have countless examples of this in our faith and our philosophy, and yet... There was some knowing chuckling going on at the beginning of my message when I said anybody dealing with conditions right now. How often do we feel victimized by or powerless in the face of the circumstances, the conditions of our life? We feel like they are so real and they have such power that I don't know how to get out of this. But the truth of the matter is, as I said a moment ago, those conditions are the result of the creative process. They don't have any power of themselves. Now, for every disease that has ever been experienced, whether it's been labeled curable or incurable, for every one of those, there has been at least one person who has had what some call a miraculous healing, right? 
Now, science can't really explain fully these anomalies. But in this faith, we have those examples. Some of you have even had that experience in your own life or someone that you love. And we know that it has something to do with consciousness because we know that consciousness is cause, that we are using this mind whether we are aware of it or not. In Love and Law, Ernest Holmes reminds us that principle never fails. We often fail to live up to it. This, this mechanical, infinite, almighty, creative law is always working and it always works. It never fails. But we often fail to live up to it because we, f- we forget or we are unaware that we can use it and it uses us and we can cooperate with it to a greater uh, benefit in our lives. Again, I'm sure that each one of us could come up with an example in our life where what we have thought or believed or accepted becomes our experience. Or we can look at our experience and say, yeah, this is what I believe. And this works in both the wonderful and happy conditions of our life and in the unhappy conditions of our life. Where do you, in the unhappy conditions of your life, where do you have that mindset of, that's just the way that it is, or this is the way that I am wired? I was thinking of this, I haven't used this example in a while, but I have this thing that I have accepted, even though I've been working to transform it for four years now, I have this idea that I have always had, so far as I can tell, that says, I have zero upper body strength. And I've been working out for four years, not just on my upper body, but I've been doing that for four years in in physical fitness, and guess what? It still seems like I have no upper body strength. (laughs) Remember what I said at the beginning, and so it is? You know, what we say, what we accept, and so I get to keep looking at that as what I accept. Now, that might not be a, you know, an earth-shattering or life-limiting ex- you know, belief, but it is really active in my experience and in my life. And you think of other things that either we accept as a community, as a nation, as a people, or maybe individually. I mean, what is it that you say is just the way that it is? Politics is messy. You know, the USA is going to hell in a handbasket. You know, my family is dysfunctional. I have a bad back. Getting ahead is hard. This center is having uh, financial concerns. Whatever it is that we accept as fact, as truth, becomes or maintains in our experience. And as I was reviewing some of these ideas this morning at home, I remembered something, and I finally found it in the Science of Mind textbook. Ernest Holmes says, the conditions of our life are as real as they are supposed to be. And when I first read that 120 years ago, I thought, well, they're as real as they're meant to be. That's how we take supposed in in today's language understanding. It's as real as it's supposed to be. No, it is as real as I suppose it to be. Not as real as it is meant to be, right? So the conditions of our life are as real as we suppose them to be. But they don't have power of their own. They are the result of my thinking. They are the result of my belief. They are the result of what I have accepted. And so if I don't like what's in front of me, if I don't like what is in my life, I can, I do have the ability to change that. How about this one? Anybody ever said this, whether or not you are working right now or want to work right now, I have to work for a living. That is something that seems to be pretty well accepted in the world today. In order to make a living, we have to work. Well, again, this is Ernest Holmes, and this is almost, it's either 99 or 100 years ago when he was writing this, Um, and this is also in in the chapter dealing with conditions in life. He says, we must clear out of our consciousness every thought of lack and limitation. Clear out all the race suggestion of limitation and the belief in poverty and lack and the belief that I have to work for a living. These things hypnotize people and bind them. The whole law is impersonal. We don't work to earn a living. You must dehypnotize yourself. Don't acknowledge bondage. We don't have to work. Well, then someone may ask, if everyone did that, who would do the work? He says, there will be such an evolution and such proof that there would be very little work to be done. Can you imagine our consciousness evolving to the place where we transcend the notion of work? That would be awesome. An active thought will always be active in body but you can free your consciousness from the bondage of having to work for a living. This thought is absolutely desirable and commendable. Specifically, here's how to do it. Every day, take the time to declare that that spirit which is in you lives in you, and your consciousness recognizes itself to be without limitation. It is perfect, complete, free, and unbound. 
What a radical idea, almost 100 years old, that says we can evolve our thinking and therefore evolve our experience simply by taking time each day to think of something new that's not bound by anything that humanity has experienced up until now. So at the beginning I asked, you know, if you were ready to have these conditions of your life, the ones that are unhappy or undesirable, to be dealt with once and for all, to be transformed or dissolved or or, or, or shifted into something else, and, and many of you said, yeah, I'm ready. And I w- it wasn't quite accurate when I said the results are up to you. What is up to you, what is up to me in this equation, in this work, is to consciously cooperate, to begin to put into mind, to begin to put into my own thinking and therefore my own subconscious, th- the more desirable, the more positive, the more life-affirming thoughts. That's my job. The results of that are up to the law. Because the same law that has brought this undesirable experience into your life has worked through your own consciousness, whether it's filters or, or limiting beliefs or what you accept, is just, that's just the way that it is. Whatever that is, as adults now, we have this opportunity to reshape our thinking. And so that same law that worked to bring the unhappy condition into your life can also work to bring a happier condition to your life. It's up to us. And so uh, part of this book has questions and answers. I don't know who posed the question. They were classes that, you know, the, the people weren't identified. One of the questions he was at, Ernest Holmes was asked was, may I be absolutely sure that I can demonstrate, you know, that I can have results show up through me? He says, if you think you can't, I will tell you why. It is because you think that you have to do it. When you realize there is but one mind in which you think, or one divine principle, it is the actor. And just as soon as you use the law, the law will operate for you. You are learning to use a perfect, creative, deductive, neutral force, which will always respond. So I don't have to make the demonstration. I don't have to make the law work. The law is going to work. This idea of from the invisible to the visible, it always works. That's why the book is called Love and Law. Ernest Holmes talked about the the presence and the power that God is, is both love, which is the desire to create, to express, and law, the ability to create it. And if we could just get this powerful idea in this teaching of what that law is and how reliable it is, we never have to question it. It always works. We learn then consciously to cooperate with it, and then the results in our life change. What I think into this law is up to me. What I am thinking is up to me. And the law then can't help but to create according to that, according to the the, the mold I'm giving it. So from this perspective then, really our mission in our life is to learn how to look at all of the conditions, not only in our life, but all of the conditions in our world. When I look out at the world, what do I see? And in those places where I see evidence of the absence of God, where I see something that doesn't feel at all like the divine presence. That is my job then. That is where I get to look until I look and look with the eyes of the divine, until I look and say, there is only one presence in the universe. There can't be anything else. And I'm going to look with the consciousness and the eye of the divine to do that until, only until then I see the divine truth, until I see and feel the presence and the activity of God in that place, in my life, or in the world. So in order to do that, as I just said, we have to remember that there's only one. God is all there is. We have to remember that first, that God is in us and we are in God. One of the ways that we teach affirmative prayer in the second step called unification is to unify ourselves with God. And the more I hear that and the more I teach that, the more I realize we've got to go a little further than that. That's not enough. And Ernest Holmes said it almost 100 years ago. The question was, are we one with infinite mind? And he said, we are not one with infinite mind. We are one in it. Can you hear or feel the difference yet? He says, do you see the difference? We are in it. We are not with it. If you say, I am one with the infinite mind, there is a subtle sense of God and you. There is no separation if you say, I am in God. I am not one with God. I am one in God. I am in God, and God is in me. If I can know that, that there is no separation, there is no difference, there is only one, and I am that, and I am one in that, when we can really say that and feel it, 
and truly know it to be our highest truth. Then we will have what Ernest Holmes writes in the Science of Mind textbook. We will have the faith of God instead of merely a faith in God. Can you feel that difference? That is so powerful. I have faith in God. Well, where's God? That makes it sound like God's somewhere else or something else that I have faith in. No, I have the faith of God because that presence is who I am. It's where I am. I am in it, and therefore I have the faith of God that knows only itself. So this is where our evolution in consciousness is taking place, where we more and more unify ourselves in that one. This is our call to up-level our game. We all practice it in some way. We wouldn't be here together today if we didn't. But this is about up-leveling our game. To take a look at every condition in our life, every single one of them, and to know that it is an effect. And that effects change when new causes are set in motion. This, this condition in my life, this effect, this experience I am having, it has come to pass. They are not permanent. They are not truth. They are the result of something. It is an effect. And the effect can be changed by setting a new cause in motion. Maybe you've heard this before. Never desert principle, not even for a special occasion. <laughs> We've all had special occasions. It's like, ah, here's the exception. There is absolutely no way that God is going to make this one whole, that this is a part of God. No, this is outside of the presence and power of God. No, we can't desert principle for anything, no matter what. That requires fortitude. That requires courage. That requires the, the willingness to stand in the truth and to call whatever that experience that seems like other is, to call it a lie. Because it's taking shape and form in my experience because of something I'm believing, because of some limitation in my awareness, and I'm willing to transcend that and to transform that. No exceptions to this notion that consciousness is cause, that mind creates my world. So we have to continue to look at every situation in our life with the eyes and the attitude of God everywhere, in every aspect of our world, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, environmental, political, financial, health, relationships. We have to look at everything and say, there is only one here. And I'm going to look at it with the awareness that, that this one that I am and this one that I am in has the ability and the power in its own nature to shift and change the experiences of my life. So we must look at those experiences, those conditions in our life, and intend to behold the divine in them. As we do this more consistently and more completely, more continuously and diligently, the conditions must change. They are only following the law. They can't stay there of their own accord. Conditions have no real power. The power is in mind, and we have access to that. We use it. So with the words of Genevieve Behrend, who was a private student of Judge Thomas Troward, I encourage you to decline to be discouraged in your seeking after greater experiences uh, of the conditions in your life. Turn away from those effects. The effects are the result of something, and they have no power over you. And if you believed it up until now, then my invitation is to stop believing that. They don't. There is no power in them but what we give it. So decline to be discouraged, turn away from those effects, and place your focus squarely and solely on the presence of God. That is how we do it. We just keep our eye focused on the one. Focused on the one. So say after me, I am one in God. I have the faith of God. My life is God's life. Therefore, my life is full of God's stuff, my life is full of God's which, stuff. Is stuff. which is good stuff. <laughs> and so it is. And so it is. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. All right. God's stuff is good stuff. And we're going to keep that, uh, keep that memory alive. It is all God. I invite you to recognize that, to look at whatever condition you address this afternoon. And when I say condition, I don't mean necessarily anything bad. The condition of my life is my life the way that it is, the way that it is right now. It's the result of everything I've been and accepted up until now. If I come across something that I'm unhappy with and I get to look at that and say, this is not the truth, and it can go away just as soon as I put a new cause in motion. So we're going to do that together.
keep doing that together. We do that through our spiritual practices. We do that through our celebration together, through the events and the classes that we offer. And we do it through this time, which is our sharing of our tithes and offerings. I invite our prosperity acceptors to form themselves into whatever shape they show up in and to come forward because they have been with us before we got here preparing the space and themselves uh, for this time as well of sharing of our financial good. I invite you to take that uh, gift and recognize as you look at it or as you imagine it because you might give outside of this moment to this center and that's an all right thing. Use your connection card to, to represent that gift. But I want you to just look at it in whatever shape it is, whatever form you're giving and to recognize that, look at this, it's a piece of God. This is God. This is the substance of God taking form. Taking form in my life as financial Supply. It is infinite and limitless just as God is, just as the substance of all creation is limitless. This is also an effect. It is the result of something. And so the access I have to the financial uh, supply in my life is the result of my awareness and my consciousness, what I believe and what I accept. And in giving consciously, which is one of our spiritual practices, we expand Beyond the limitation of, well, it's my job is my source. No, God is my source. And it's infinite and it's limitless. And so we push against our limitations sometimes, but we give from a place of recognizing and celebrating this is divine substance. And I share it to support this work, to, 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 to um, affirm its good work in Las Vegas and beyond, and uh, also to accept that it is limitless in possibility. So I expand my experience of it and the good flows from me and to me. It's perfect. So I invite you to hold that gift in your hand, to recognize it as divine substance, and then place it near your heart. Give it a blessing of release and abundance, and then we'll send it on its way. And so it is.
Yeah. Is that original? What? Is that original? Yeah. Yeah, what's it called? It, just feel it. Oh, I feel it. I do indeed. Thank you, guys. That's terrific. Do you have product with you today? You know, I, I do. You do? So if you'd like to, if you'd like Darren's address, and you can go over and pick up some product. <laughs> huh? People can come see me at uh, my gig tomorrow night. Where is it? At Grape Street in downtown Summerlin. Downtown Summerlin called Grape Street tomorrow when? At What's his set? 6 to 8.30 he'll be there. Downtown Summerlin. Sounds like a nice night out. If I didn't have a leadership council meeting, I would consider that. Hey, thank you. Maybe we'll have our meeting there. <laughs> no? All right. Yes. <laughs> Peg's voting for it. We're green. <laughs> All right. So some information to share with you before we end our service with prayer this morning. You probably saw it on your way in, the second uh, half of our book sale. It looks like it actually grew since two weeks ago. I'm not sure how that happened, but plenty of opportunities for some really, really great deals on books of all kinds out there. Every single cent that they collect from that sale goes to support the um, Science Mind School, the library there in Nairobi, Kenya. So it's a wonderful opportunity for us to support uh, halfway around the world, a wonderful group of students. So that's happening uh, right after service this morning. Today starts a new monthly gathering. On the fourth Sunday of every month, we're going to come together in the sanctuary for an experience that's being called right now, I'm calling it right now, I Am Enough. And it's really about um, when, we, when we practice these principles and when we do kind of what I talked about all morning, we often hit up against our, the, the limits of where we've been up until now. And that can be termed as enoughness. You know, I don't have enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not educated enough, I'm not young enough, I don't have enough money or whatever. All of that kind of idea, none of that's the truth. But it is a common experience for a lot of us. And so this will be an opportunity for us to remember that I, not only I am enough, because I am a creation of God, but there is enough. For those of you who took the Prosperity Plus Two class, this is kind of going further with those principles from that class, but this is open to everybody. It's a free uh, hour, hour and a quarter, every fourth Sunday. So we're going to start in here at 11.45 today. I invite you to consider dropping in and seeing what that feels like and, and moving, uh, being encouraged to move beyond anything that has limited you up until now. Our book of the month is, if you, if you order it, if, if you put your name on the list during April, we will give it to you when it comes in, or we will sell it to you when it comes in for 20% off the, uh, the cover price. It's a, a wonderful book. It's really powerful, very clear, and a really terrific experience of reading it. So it's worth the wait, as I said. Put your name on the list in the bookstore. We'll let you know as soon as they are here. We have a Wednesday service every Wednesday night. This week it starts always at 7 o'clock. I'm going to talk about the end of the world. It's going to be uplifting. It's going to be great. So if you're wondering what the heck that means, you're just going to have to come and find out. Justin and Lynn will be helping me out. It's going to be a great experience. Always beforehand for an hour from 5.30 to 6.30, we have a bucket bowl. Every time you go to the window with our wonderful kitchen staff serving you, they will give you a bowl of soup or some other wonderful thing that has been prepared and provided by this community. It's dinner and wonderful fellowship starting at 5.30 every Wednesday. In a couple of weeks, first Sunday of May, it's not Cinco de Mayo, it's the 7th of May, so the Global Heart Connection, this international outreach ministry, is having a Siete de Mayo <laughs> brunch, um, and so all the wonderful Mexican food that they give us once a year is awesome. The tickets will be available that day. Again, all proceeds support our sister center in Nairobi, Kenya. Liz Kirby, are you back yet? There you are. She's going to come forward with uh, some, another uh, announcement about how we are... Uh, evolving in our stewardship and our, and our caring for our environment, but I want you to know that um, how many of you brought something to eat, to, to share today uh, in the fellowship? Oh, and they're all in the back because it's only a few of you. Thank you for those of you who chose to do that. This is how we uh, support ourselves with food after the service. Next week, if your name, last name starts with F, L, R, V, or W, those are the letters left over because it's a fifth month, fifth Sunday of the month. Um, if your name starts with those letters or you just feel the call, please bring something to share for that time after the service. It's a wonderful experience and an opportunity for us to uh, nourish ourselves with food while we have fun together in fellowship. And Liz is enhancing it this week starting. What you got? Well, happy Earth Day, everybody. Earth Day was yesterday. And um, we're going to create a new cause today to get a new effect happening here. And um, so in honor of Earth Day and also in the spirit of creating a world that works for everyone by being better stewards of the earth, we are today launching cloth napkins. These big, beautiful, reusable cloth napkins 
that have been donated with weekly laundry service. So we are eliminating paper napkins from our great room to reduce our imprint on the earth. And please use them. Don't worry about getting them dirty because they're gonna get washed every week and brought back. So they will be in a basket in the great room. Take one of these instead of a paper napkin, please. And there will be a bag underneath the basket of napkins to put the soiled napkins in or the used napkins in, whether they're soiled or not. If you used it, put it in the bag and they will come back nice and clean next week. And um, as the months continue to go on, we will have more ideas and more suggestions and hopefully get everybody involved in reducing our footprint on the earth and being more responsible about our use of throw away things because when you think about it, when you think of throwing something away, there is no away. It's, <laughs> there's no away. A wise person told me that, which I never thought of before, but it stays here and we have to deal with it somehow. So the more we can reduce our use of throw away products, the better off we are. So enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. There's another one. Hey, Liz. Liz. Yeah. She said we have to deal with it, right? That's a condition we have to deal with. So we are. We're setting a new cause in motion, and I think that's terrific. So thank you for that. So we're going to end our service, as we always do, with prayer. This prayer is a group prayer. It's for all of us, and it's the truth for all of us. But if you would like specific targeted prayer, I invite you to stop by the prayer room first after the service. Our practitioners are there to give you that gift this morning of one-on-one -on -one prayer. But if you would like specific prayer, you can write that on your connection card there on the back of it. There are cards in the lobby you could fill out and drop in a box if you don't have a connection card with you at any certain time. Or you can email our Ministry of Prayer, which is not going to stand. I thought I already said that, didn't I? Ministry of Prayer, hello? Stand. <laughs> now, so you know, when I just start talking about prayer, go ahead and stand up, because sometimes I forget things. Anyway, um, this is, <laughs> this is our group of, well, who are here today, but we are in prayer every day. This is how we best support this community, and our form of prayer is powerful and wonderful. So we hold you in loving esteem every single day by praying with you and for you, specifically or in general, if you haven't put in a specific request. So would you please take in a deep breath, and if it is your custom to close your eyes, you may certainly do that. And I begin in that place of recognition, recognition of something that has been spoken of all morning here, that God is all there is. There is one, one intelligence, one mind, one presence, one creator, one life. And I call it God. It can go by many names or no name. But it is that one invisible, infinite presence within which all visible, tangible, relative form emerges. In the beginning, God created. God already existed in that first moment of time. And time and space are both results. They are both conditions. They are both the effect of the creative process. This universe is the body of God. And it is reflecting its creator, expanding, expanding, and expanding infinitely, becoming more like the creator itself. And this universe is made in the image and likeness of God. It is perfection and wholeness and right action, supply and creativity, beauty and wisdom, peace and love. This is true of all life, therefore this is true of my life. Because truly I am one in that which created me. This is true of each one, hearing these words right now. Because it is the truth of all creation. We are one in that. So we are one together here. And we are one individually, wherever we are. That one is all that is. So these words I speak are truth for and about each one of us. That as we enlarge our capacity to comprehend that God is who and what we are, that we are in it and it is who we are always, there is more and more of that perfect divine presence and activity and intelligence to express and experience in our lives. 
And so we perceive these effects, these conditions, these circumstances of our life and those which we no longer desire to experience, we simply turn away from and instead place our eye on the divine. God is all there is. God is right where I am right now. It is in me and it is operating through and as me to greater effect in my life. This is the truth. We keep our eye on it. And we steadfastly refuse to believe anything that feels less than that, that seems unlike it. There is only God. There is only good. And I am so grateful to remember this right now, to have this space, this community to remember together, to know it, to celebrate it, to be reminded when I forget, and then to practice it, to live it, to experience it in a greater way than ever before. I'm so grateful that this is the truth, that it is always the truth, and that we know it. And as we know it and accept it, we can let go, because the law, that infinite, almighty, mechanical energy that always works and is always working, and I can always rely upon it, it is working now. It is working upon this word to create a greater experience of good in my life, because I have declared it and I have accepted it. So I let go with gratitude, knowing that it is done right here, right now, and we anchor it together by saying, and so it is. I am letting go of the things that no longer serve me. As I'm letting go, God's revealed and I am whole. I am letting go of the things that no longer serve me. As I'm letting go, God's revealed and I am whole. I am letting go of the things that no longer serve me. As I'm letting go, God's revealed and I am whole. All right, let's finish our letting go process by standing up. We're going to sing, I release. I release and I let go, I let the Spirit run my life, and my heart is open wide, yes I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife, with my faith I see the light, I am free in the Spirit, yes I'm only Let's hear ya. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only no more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Woo! All right. So reach out your hand if you can on either side of you. Make a connection with another human being. And please say after me, something wonderful is happening through me right now. Something wonderful is happening through me right now. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in everything I do. I am it. I receive it. I share it. And I accept it. Just the way that it is. And just the way that it becomes. Thank you, life. Amen. <laughs>